Like T-Rex, Triceratops, and Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus is one of the most iconic dinosaurs of all time. In 2019, PNSO offered its beaver the Stegosaurus, and since then, PNSO's continued to improve its balance of detail, paint tabs, scientific accuracy, and price, and I was hoping for a revised 135th scale Stegosaurus. Well, I got it. Now this is the new museum line Bieber the Stegosaurus, and a baby. I believe it's the first time PNSO has done a set like this, and it's always exciting when you have the makings of a diorama. You can see it comes in a museum line box, and it's always such a special thing to receive one of these white boxes. Now let's get to the adult. This model is about 22 centimeters long. That's 8.6 inches and 11 centimeters or 4.3 inches at the highest point. Now, assuming an adult length of 7 to 9 meters, which is 22 to 29.6 feet, now this puts the scale between 1 to 30 to 1 to 40. Now, PNSO declares 1 to 35th scale, so the life size would be 7.7 .7 meters or about 25.3 feet. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room, the paint application. Overall impression, it's dark. A few collectors have complained about it, and I can say that in mine, at least, it is darker than I expected from the release images. And it's a pity, because this actually hides much of the actual sculpt, which is absolutely beautiful, with so much going for it, as we'll see now. Now first, I have to talk about the wonderful proportions. Ever since Sophie was introduced to the world, I've seen reconstructions that exuberantly threw out everything we knew before. Suddenly, limbs got a lot closer in length, the hips downshifted dramatically, and basically just an upscaling of Sophie. I wasn't comfortable with that. Now Sophie's a young adult, still not skeletally mature, and dinosaurs grew allometrically, not isometrically. I actually wrote Dr. Susanna Maitman, the expert on stegosaurs, about this, and I'm absolutely delighted she actually just replied. If I'd done this review just one day earlier, I would have missed it. And her take is that it could have been possible for the hind limb to grow more, but without further data, she can't say for sure. Now personally, she's okay with Sophie's proportions, but it also means that I can still be open to the idea that the truth is somewhere in between. And in PNSO, I think we have that in between. The hips are lower, and there's still an appreciable leg length difference, but not extreme. However, some facts from Sophie we can be sure of. For example, the number of major bones shouldn't change with age from young to full adult. So any differences in Sophie to supersede previous reconstructions are valid. And as such is beyond contestation. Since Gilmore described the holotype in 1914, Segosaurus has been traditionally considered to have 10 cervicals and 17 dorsal vertebrae. This made it a short-necked outlier compared to other stegosaurs. Sophie proved it was really 13 cervicals and 14 dorsals, so new reconstructions can have a longer neck and correspondingly shorter torso, bringing it closer to other stegosaurs, such as Miragaya here. Now, one thing I didn't like about the first Bieber was this hip structure. You can see there's this wide, almost shelf-like appearance to the iliac area, which makes it look like there's some muscle wasting here. Now, I've since learned that with Weiss, this is actually very plausible, as you can see in Matt Dempsey's reconstruction here. I also asked Dr. Maitman this, and while she did think the dip between hips and tail looks odd, we don't know definitively how much soft tissue would have filled it out. So she said there's leeway for artistic license here, and now I'm a lot more assured. The head sculpt is so nicely captured and demonstrates that narrow snout characteristic of the Stegosaurus skull. Now look at the beak. I love these liquid black eyes. 
and all that fine detail in the face, which is at such an insane level. And to think that this is actually the norm for PNSO. And this is especially evident as you progress down the rest of the animal. Now the neck here has that stegosaurus throat armour, which is pleasingly rendered. I mean, I don't know if you can see this clearly, but, but these scales are polygonal, sculpted exactly in the same rosette pattern as you can see in this photograph. And these are clearly differentiated from the scalation in the neck itself, which going down the trunk a little, you can see varies regionally still then intermittently with these larger scutes, or feature scales. And taking a little detour down the front, you see the detail in the limbs. In fact, um, even though the coloration is dark, there's actually a lot of subtlety going on in the paint applications. Now again, see how the stripes blend in. And I really love this transition from the olive green to the gold green, and then the pinkish tones here. And see here, even on the underside, there are other blends. Likewise in the flank. Look at the region here in the thighs. In the attachment of the, in the shoulder area. You know, I sometimes think that PNSO is so good at what it does that, you know, with every single model it's produced being so good, there's a danger we take it for granted and we can become jaded and find things to complain about rather than to celebrate. So yes, while the color is darker than expected, there's still a lot to love about this. There are 17 dermal plates Though Sophie was found with 18 and had one missing for a total of 19. Raven in 2011 estimated as high as 22. Now here, these plates are Sophie's and each black bar represents 10 centimeters or 4 inches. The change in shapes follows so closely and except for some damaged plates which PNSO of course completes. But just look! For example, here in plate 10 and, and plate 11, which is the mirror image of what you see in the picture there, look how closely the shape follows. And we continue down. And then the keratinous texture. Now we've seen grooves in stegosaur plates a hundred times before, but they're often crude and oversized. A PNSO elevates this by sculpting so finely, they're almost as fine as human hairs. And I also like how the attachment to the skin is done. Of course, you've noticed the vivid blend of colours and how smoothly they segue into each other. And although because of the darkness here, it doesn't contrast as starkly as it could have been as a display structure. Besides display, there are many theories what these plates were for. But I wanted to quickly slip in my two sets. And even though defense has been thrown out, it's never been completely debunked in my mind. Yes, they were tin. And we've all seen this photo of a bite taken out of one, probably by an Allosaurus. 
Now let me ask you, do you think the Allosaurus was actually trying to bite this plate? Or did the plate get in the way of something softer it was targeting? And also biting anything this sharp isn't going to be as pleasant as biting a potato chip. It's just like in a knife fight, you've got no idea what angle these plates are going to be. Now finally, if you don't think that something this thin might at least do some kind of damage, you've clearly never had a paper cut, so I'll leave it there. The tail curves upwards, which is anatomically correct. A very nice muscle bulk here. Oh, just look at the musculature running up here. The tegmizer is correctly oriented horizontally. And while in other models they are sized the same or haphazardly, here the anterior pair is broader and longer than the posterior pair, as it should be. And just look at the texturing in here. Again, such fine detail in a very nice color fade. And now we get to a brighter spot, literally more brightly coloured, with stronger bands supporting the fact that baby animals are often coloured differently to better camouflage against different surrounds. Now this baby is 7 centimetres, or about 2.7 inches along this curve. Really cute. And I love the baby proportions with the bigger head. Look at these cute plates here. And the little tagamizer. Now detail-wise, I hope the camera can pick it up. You will not believe the detail PNSO has achieved on this little guy. There's a there's a texturing detail on the plates. The skin scalation. Even feature scales and osteoderms. See, the underside here is no less textured. With a little throat armour. Now the baby also stands up by standing up. I love the bipedal pose. As you can see in the Maitman 2014 paper, the center of mass is very near the acetabulum and glenoid, even considering the weight of the dermal plates, so this is possible. The Mallison 2014 paper agrees, and here the black dot indicates the center of mass without the osteoderms. The red dot is the center of mass considering the dermal plates, and the blue dot is if you threw in hypothetical shoulder spikes, and they're all pretty much in the same area. Now, since the adults were certainly more quadrupedal, for example, uh, given the hoof-like toes on the hand, having the baby adopt a bipedal pose is a nice nod to that possibility. And actually, this reminds me very much of my sideshow Stegosaurus, standing in almost the same way as the PNSO baby. As you can see, a facultatively bipedal stance looks pretty believable. Now, a quick word on the booklet. I mentioned that the newer run of PNSO pamphlets seems to have a lower quality of paper. I'm happy to say the paper quality of the booklet remains the same. Just look at this. Uh, I love the positive messages PNSO always includes. So suitable for children. 
Now let's compare it with its predecessor, the first Bieber. Obviously, there's more detail. I actually like all Bieber's coloration, except for the thickness uh, in the dark paint application here on the plates. It's just really visually striking. We'll just look at the tagmizer here. If I could get someone to fade this in such a way as to create a transition from this to this to this, I think we could have a very nice family portrait. And next we have the 2019 Safari Limited Sophie. Again, a really beautiful model, including the coloration. I feel happy just looking at it. Uh, Detail-wise, you can see the PNSO is superior, but it's still one of my favorites, and some of you may prefer the proportions of this. Then we have the Rewall Stegosaurus and Baby. You can see how much more refined the texture of the PNSO is. And the proportions are more accurate, of course. Now, paint wise, I have a nostalgic fondness of this more traditional color. Oh, and the texture of these plates with the LAGs. They seem inspired by the sideshow Stegosaurus, and it's still to die for. And I'm really happy to have these two in my collection. Babies, you can see the size difference. And just given how small this is, again, the PNSO is really impressive. The only thing I wish PNSO had was a base to properly showcase this beautiful set. Let's have a couple of other PNSO Segasaurs. Uh, first, we have the 130th scale Tuotiang Saurus. And of course, the splendid 1 to 28th scale Miragaya. And finally, we can't not bring in the PNSO Allosaurus, the perfect predator prey pairing. I've said that depending on the adult size you're willing to take, the Allosaurus could be massaged into 135th scale. So, scaling perfectly to Bieber. And for those of us morbid enough to want to know, yes, the baby does indeed fit into the mouth. In sum, this is a near-perfect Stegosaurus in terms of scale, detail, sculpt, proportions. The only thing is, if the paint was a bit lighter on the body, I think it would have been perfect. And I think it could still be the perfect Stegosaurus for you. And he does pair wonderfully in scale, quality, and aesthetics with the Allosaurus. So that's it for this review. I'm really happy to have another splendid museum line PNSO. And I can't wait to see what else PNSO comes out with in the future. Perhaps, I hope, one of those modest ornithopods, very, very underrepresented. I'll see you guys soon.